Limited lights, limited cameras, limited budgets, these are all common. But what do you do when you have limited space to even shoot in? How is it possible to make a movie when everyone and everything is piled on top of each other like some kind of sandwich? A film sandwich or something. I'll think of something better later. How's it going everyone? Hope you're staying creative out there and welcome once again back to Leon Unity, the creative filmmaking and storytelling community by Leon Films. If you are new here, my name is Petros and I am an award-winning writer, director and general filmmaker both behind and sometimes in front of the camera too. And this is Minute Tip Monday where as always we at Leon Films as a working video production company for brands and creatives give you real world filmmaking tips from our adventures on set in just a few minutes. And sadly, this is our final tip from the shoot of our short film written by Andrew Hollingworth called Bump. What do you do if there's just not enough space to swing a cat in your filming location? Well, first of all, don't swing cats around. At any time, that's awful. And animal cruelty. How dare you. But sometimes, filming requires a lot of space to set up. Lights, soft boxes, they take up space. The tripod takes up space. Obviously, the actors themselves take up space. And when you're in a cramped environment, it can feel like you need some kind of Doctor Who based TARDIS science magic just to get the job done. Well, while we don't have the sci-fi technology of the Time Lords, modern technology has come quite a long way in the last few years, even if physics itself tends to get in the way of that. Here's how we use technology and our environment to our advantage. Great times. Uh, step one, don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen, though. <laughs> Step one, analyze the story on the page. In this case, we were lucky as the script called for a rather tense and awkward scene, which helps when the cinematographer basically has to do acrobatics in order to get the shot. More on this in just a second. Step two, analyze the environment. Look around the area. What's in the way? What won't be seen on camera? And what can you get rid of to make a bit of space for yourself? How can you move that shea out of the way, the chair, whatever? How close can you put the actors together before it looks like they're standing on top of each other? As our story called for an awkward look, we could get pretty close. Step three, equipment choice. Saving space is vital. You don't want to have to deal with enormous Reds or Ari Alexa cinema cameras in a setup where just one of them fully rigged up, like takes up two thirds of the room. Scale that shit down. We used our tiny Sony A6500 camera. It's palm sized. If you need raw, use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera or possibly the Sigma FP, both of which have decent sized sensors and shoot raw. The Sigma FP in particular is a full frame camera which can be hugely useful if you're, you're just out of space. A big sensor can make all the difference. But don't take it from me, even major TV shows like House MD used a Canon 5D Mark II to get some of the tighter shots, for example in elevators, because the field of view is just wider. Then there's light choice. Oh there you go, that's it, that's what you need for this right. shot. A horror right? shot, yeah. It's about to be a hard A low angle horror shot. We're romantic horror. It's going to be an amazing <laughs> We used flat panel LEDs for most of the coverage. They take up almost no space and they can work great as backlights, fills, and with a bit of a diffusion, even a key light. We also used the window, which we hung a giant bed sheet over outside to soften the light going inside. It became an instant giant flat panel. The alternative to this are the rollable flexible LED lights. They're super lightweight. Even if some of them could be a bit expensive, they can fit into the tiniest of places because of their flexibility. Both Aladdin lights and Falcon eyes, who are a bit cheaper, do some great stuff out there. Aladdin in particular does a full RGB one as well, which is amazing, called the All In. And this shoot has convinced me to buy one. There's also a misnomer that all light must be high quality. That's not necessarily true, when it's not your key lights at least. Backlights can be hard, soft, big or small, as long as they don't end up in the camera. So we used an Aperture M9, a tiny little light connected to a portable battery bank and shoved into the corner near the boiler with a bit of tape to give Andrew here a nice bit of separation from the background. Then, there's lens choice. 
You want to go with something that is wide, that can focus in close, and has a big aperture opening. Our choice was this, the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Given the camera is APS-C, roughly Super 35 size sensor, this was wide enough that we could still see the area and was super fast at f1.4, which meant plenty of background blur to keep the image looking cinematic, but also it meant that we didn't have to have super powerful lights on set because we could shoot with very little lighting. ND filters, again, were used to keep the 180 degree shutter rule. It's also a borderline macro lens with a very short minimum focus distance, so you can go super close. Both Sigma and Zeiss have great lenses for this. But what about close-ups, you say? Well, fortunately for us, this scene required an awkward presence, as I mentioned earlier. Ultra-wide lens combined with ultra close-ups warps the face, giving him this really eerie vibe, which I'm not gonna lie, makes me feel super uncomfortable and that's what we wanted. If your scene doesn't call for it, a better bet is using a full frame camera. You can certainly give it an interesting look by breaking the traditional portrait lens rule and using something like a 16 millimeter. After all, rules are made to be broken. Except my rules, the rules I give you, I'm infallible. Follow my rules. There's also the issue that with using wide lenses, that can result in people looking further away from each other because the background is not quite as compressed. So you've got to put them close together. However, some actors may have certain height differentials that are accentuated with a wide lens. So an Apple box comes in handy. Or if you're like me and your Apple box got stolen from your storage unit with like £3,000 worth of other equipment by a bunch of opportunistic assholes, use a stack of paper to lift your tiny actor and get your taller actor to crouch a little bit. How are we making Ori look a bit taller in this frame? Well, the answer may surprise you. She's standing on paper. She's standing on paper. So what happens when you don't have an Apple box? Lastly, a monitor, sometimes paired with a good autofocus system, can be a great way to remove one of the biggest things on set, yourself. So using a long cable, you don't have to look at the camera, you can just look at the monitor. Sometimes a wireless follow focus might be useful if your autofocus is, well, Panasonic's. Let's round this up. Find a way to make the story call for a bit of awkwardness and you've got it made. Examine your environment. Not everyone has to be on set at all times and the area should be as clear as possibly can be. Use the right gear to tell your story. Wide, fast lenses are optimal, and smaller, more portable cameras are great. I'd show you my camera, but I'm currently filming on it. Lastly, people. Move them around, lift them out, get them out of the way, clear as much space as you can for the actors and the equipment. The only things that need to be on set in a pinch are the things that are gonna be appearing on camera or making things appear on camera. What other techniques have you used to save space on set? I know a lot of YouTubers out there film in very cramped locations. What other kinds of real world filmmaking tips can we give you from our time? This is our last one on the set of Bump and with the COVID-19 outbreak, it's unlikely you'll see one from uh, a film set anytime soon. But I've personally learned a lot about shooting from home lately, so maybe I'll go and do something about that. If you like this video, hit the like button down below, click it, smash it, just, you know, tell YouTube that you like this video and share this video with your friends to help us grow a filmmaker community. We want to just like talk about all kinds of creative things on this channel and get it out to people. So consider subscribing as well as that really does help us out. We also have the Leon Unity Discord server where you can chat with us. The link is in the description. We chat about all kinds of creative stuff and other creators are in there to talk with you all the time. Or you can just hit us up on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter we read everything on there, as well as reading all of the comments below, of course. So for now, stay in, stay safe, but when this is all over, get out there and create new worlds. So Andy, Ori, how are you feeling today now that we're wrapped? Um, a little bit sad. I don't feel anything. <laughs> and Andy's dead inside. I mean, I'm doing washing up, I mean, what a day. <laughs> well, I'm gonna miss it, at least. It's been a ride. It's been a ride, man. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster.